Good morning from Trinity Episcopal Church in Boonville. We hope you'll enjoy our spiritual offering of music and the sermon of Mother Linda Logan for the first Sunday after Christmas. And the Word was with God, and the Word was God. So begins the prologue to John's Gospel. Writing sometime in the end of the first century, the writer sets out the conviction that Jesus of Nazareth is the articulation of God. He is the Word that God spoke into the void the word that gave shape to creation. And what came into being in him was life, the life that was the light of all people. These are astounding statements, statements not made by the other Gospels. These are declarations that Jesus was not only with God before creation, but that all that was created came about through him. Jesus articulates or expresses the wisdom of God, John says. And looking at the gospel that John unfolds, we see that the wisdom of God involves self-offering, an offering of self that reaches its climax in mutual indwelling. 
This is heady stuff. This is theology, or thought, about God that goes way beyond what the other Gospels in the New Testament offer. It goes so far beyond what the others offer that this Gospel was not widely accepted when it first began to circulate. The other Gospels are also theological. They also make statements about God and how God relates to human beings. Statements that are made by words or actions attributed to Jesus. And they make declarations about Jesus' relationship to God. They call him the Messiah the Anointed One, the one ordained by God to lead the people of Israel. They also call him the Son of God and the Son of Man, Son of God referring to what early Christians saw as the role or office that Jesus held in God's work of salvation. Son of Man, to Jesus' stature as a human being. But in no other gospel is Jesus called the Word of God. And in no other gospel is he said to be the agent of creation and to have been with God in the beginning, to be, in some sense, divine not equated with the totality of God. John's Gospel doesn't go that far. The definitive article, the, is missing with this Gospel's use of the word God in relation to Jesus. The understanding that Jesus, the Son of God, is equal to God came later in the church's understanding. But this gospel does make statements so lofty about Jesus that, as I said, it had a hard time being accepted as gospel for a number of years. But it was eventually accepted and became, in fact, a bedrock of theological understanding for the Church. Jesus was the Word God spoke into the void, into the emptiness of human hearts, into the ache of their longing. His was the life that gave light to those around him. His was the life that brought the meaning of life to light. His was the life that incarnated or fleshed out what God was about. Jesus was so much at one with God that he was part of God. And as God has always been, so must have been this Jesus. His spirit and God's were intermingled. They indwelled each other. And people who live as he lived and taught, loving and trusting God to the point of offering all that they are to the world, and loving each and every person as he has loved them, have Jesus' spirit and the spirit of the one Jesus called Ava, Father, living in themselves. They probably don't know it, so focused are they on others, just like they probably don't realize that their spirits live in Jesus and Ava, God, too but they are all indwelling each other. And that is what the Gospel of John is all about. And 
as this became the bedrock theology of the church, this is what we are to be about too. Living so in the spirit of Jesus that we and God and Jesus are all at home in each other. For we are also to incarnate God, to flesh out God's love in the world. We do this in many ways by not denying the rights and securities we have to others, by befriending people, using our abilities to smooth out the road, that highway that Isaiah tells us God commands be prepared for people. When we do these things, we become another life-giving word that God speaks into the void, another light with which God lightens people's darkness. When we make of our lives an offering, we become another articulation of God's presence in the world. So be it. Church located on Schuyler Street in Boonville. We're glad to be part of your day and we invite you to join us in person for our weekly service at 9 o'clock Sunday mornings. <laughs>